Hello everybody, this is Chef Bob here today and today we're going to make a honey baked ham. But we're going to do a couple of things different. One, we're going to make it in the New Wave oven. Number two, we're going to make it in a, in a Reynolds oven bag or an oven bag. And three, we're going to do something a little different as far as the spices with our honey glaze. So I think you're going to like it. It's sort of my secret recipe and it's going to be easy to do. And let's get started. So I have about a 10 pound ham right here. And I've taken out of the wrapper, you know, wiped it off, dried it. And now the first thing you want to do is you want to score it. And that's so your glaze can get in there and all your flavors, all your spices, your rub, all that can get in there. Now, uh, what you can do is I like to go on, on an angle, like a diamond pattern. You could just go, if you see what I'm doing, I'm trying to get it for the camera, you know, uh, parallel to the face of the ham and then perpendicular. And that's fine. A lot of people do it that way. I like to try, if you can, the best you can, is to go more on 45 and then 90 from that. So sort of a diamond shape. And what you want to do is you don't want to go too deep. Just get a sharp knife and you don't want to go any more than a quarter of an inch of a score on, on the ham. So I'll try to, in fact, maybe I'll put it like this or try to get a better angle uh, on the cam from the camera here. And we're just going to do something like that and just glide the knife through it and you're going to go maybe three quarters of an inch apart you know and and it's okay it doesn't have to be precise you just want to get a fairly even uh slice going through here for presentation just so it looks fancy okay so what i'm going to do I'm going to continue to, to go through here and slice it, and then I'll go in the other pattern, and I'll show what it looks like as soon as I finish scoring the, the outer skin. Okay, I finished scoring the ham, and as you can see, I have this checkerboard pattern all around the crisscross pattern of the diamond cuts. Now, like I said before, uh, don't worry if your lines aren't even or, or whatever. It's just to get the flavors in, and, and as it cooks, it's going to shrink up, and it's going to have a, you know, a nice decorative touch to it. So before I put in the oven bag and in the New Wave oven, I'm going to push this aside, and we're going to make our glaze. Now, our glaze is... Um, you're gonna, it's going to look familiar to you. It has a lot of the common ingredients you see in all the glaze recipes. But we're going to modify it a little bit with some secret spices and ingredients. So what we're going to do, um, sort of a preview, what we're going to put on is some pineapple and cherries along with our honey glaze. And what you want to do is you want to save the juice. So we're going to use about a half cup of uh, cherry juice. I'm just going to put that in our pan. I'll turn this on, and I'm going to turn this on a, a somewhat of a low heat uh, just to get it started. So we put about a half cup of cherry juice. To that we have oh, about a three-quarter of a cup of pineapple juice. They come out of the can of pineapple slices. Okay. Now, so far, that's common. What we're going to do is we're going to do about a cup of brown sugar. Okay. And to that, we're going to add, now that's sort of our, our sweet part. Oh, and there's also one-third cup of honey. You need honey or it wouldn't be honey-baked ham. Now, if your honey is getting pretty thick or is even starting to crystallize a little bit, just put it in the microwave, but be careful not to overdo it. You can just put it in there to warm it up a little bit uh, to get it going. So now we're going to add some of our secret spices here. Now a lot of hams you'll put sort of a, you'll rub mustard in and maybe put a pepper, a pepper rub, mustard rub. So we're going to do something similar to that. We have one teaspoon of uh, mustard, dried mustard, ground dried mustard. And to that we have, I believe I have about a half teaspoon of ground black pepper. You could do a quarter teaspoon if you like, but I have a, again, one teaspoon of ground mustard and a half teaspoon of uh, ground black pepper. So I'm going to put that in there. That's sort of our savory to add our sweet and savory combination. And now there's some common and some unique uh, spices in here. 
Again, what's common is we have a quarter teaspoon of clove. Instead of putting the clove pieces, we're going to use some uh, a ground clove because we're just going to put it in the glaze because it'll be in the oven bag. So we have a quarter teaspoon of ground clove, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and for something a little different, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. It gives it that extra little zing um, that people may question and say, you know, I've had honey baked ham before, but there's something different about yours. What make, you know, what's that extra flavor? And you can just say, you know, that's, that's your secret, uh, you know, your secret recipe. So what I'm going to do is on a low heat, I'm just going to get this glaze going. I'll turn it up a little bit. I just want to be careful since I'm talking here and I didn't want it to, uh, to burn. You basically just want it to uh, melt all the sugar, get all the brown sugar dissolved, and then get it just to thicken up just a little bit. N not a lot, just uh, sort of a medium thickness. So I'm going to stir this. I'm going to put, on this, put this on a medium heat, keep stirring it, and I'll show you when I'm done with the consistency you're looking for. Okay, so I've been cooking this for a couple of minutes, and uh, what you need to be careful of is when this cools, it's going to thicken because these sugars will start to, to thicken up like a sugar syrup. So I haven't cooked it very long, just to reduce it a little bit, get the flavors blended. And now there's one more secret ingredient I saved to the end here. And just a little bit, go sparingly on this, but I think it enhances it a little bit more, that, that smokiness. And yes, it's liquid smoke. Just a little bit. Because you do have a smoked ham, which has great smoked flavor. And this is just going to enhance it if you just add a little bit. And I'm just going to try to pour in, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter teaspoon of that. About a quarter teaspoon max. You know, just a couple of drops. And I'm going to stir that in. And then I'm going to let this cool down. I'm going to turn it off. Let it cool. So as this is cooling, I'm going to get the oven bag ready and show you the next step. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step. I've taken the hot plate and I've put it out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the ham in the oven bag and then put in the new wave oven. So what we can do is first, if I can manage to maneuver this, I'll take the lid off the new wave. And I have the ex uh, extender ring on the new wave so it fits. <laughs> Now this is not a normal uh, Reynolds turkey bag, which you can use. If you have this, you can use them. This is a bag that can be also uh, used in slow cookers. It's a slow cooker oven bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this face down because when it cooks, all the juices will be down there and that will keep the face moist. And then the rest of it, the skin will render and the juices will flow down, which will be great. So what we're going to do is the first thing I'm going to do I just paint a little bit of this glaze on the face. Well, I'm holding this to do this, but you know, feel free to lay this down on the cutting board and do it. I'm just trying to do this quickly to give you an idea of, of what to do. You know, and, and as this cooks, all the juices are going to run down underneath also. But I just want to give this a little bit of a head start and at least get a little bit of glaze on the face of this okay so I'll put that like that and now basically what we're going to do is just take the rest of this glaze let me get this out of the way and just you know put it all over the ham now you could you know try to pour it um, or you can just take your time and brush it on here so I'm going to cover this whole thing with glaze and then uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've covered the entire ham with our glaze mixture. And I'll try to get it closer to the camera so you can see. It's evenly coated with this glaze, which I happen to taste a little bit, and it's, it's very good. So now I'm going to put our cutting board out of the way. Now to put your glaze somewhere, you'll need the rest of it for... We're going to glaze it one more time at the end, and then we're also going to uh, perhaps put in a little a bowl with a ladle you could to serve over the slices when you serve it up. So now, what we'll do is, this is a little over 10 pounds, so I'm going to call it 10 pound ham, which takes about 15 minutes per pound. 
And this was a fully cooked ham, a lot of them already are, but it's 15 minutes per pound uh, to get it up to about 130 degrees for this one. Uh, different hams may have different recommended temperatures. This ham's recommended temperature is 130 degrees to serve it, a minimum. So we may go a little higher than that. Um, what I'm going to do now, it's covered with glaze. So 15 minutes per pound times 10 pounds is going to be about two and a half hours. The last half hour, we're going to open it up and we're going to put our pineapple. We're going to put our cherries on it and we're going to put the last glaze and we're going to have it open. So it sort of it caramelizes a little more. It'll caramelize the uh, pineapple and the cherries for that, that final presentation. But for the first two hours, we're just going to leave it like this. Do the best we can to pull it together and use our tie wrap that comes with our oven bag. If I can get it here, it's a little, little tight. Like I said, this oven bag is one that is sized to use in slow cookers. Oops, you know, crock pot type slow cooker. There we go. So we have that centered. We have our rack, and it's set for the one inch up from the bottom. We don't need to line it with foil because we're in an oven bag, so it's going to keep the new wave oven nice and clean. We'll put our lid on. Now this is simple. Oh, first we have to plug it in. It always works better when you plug it in. Okay, now we're just going to type in our, our time. Our time is, what did I say, two hours? Cook time, start. Okay, so I'll see you back here in about two hours. Okay, it's been just a little under two hours. I stopped at about 10 minutes shy of two hours because it was starting to get pretty brown. I let it cool for a couple of minutes because now we're going to open it up, put on our pineapples, cherries, reglaze it, and do the final half hour. So let's take this off carefully. Let all that steam out. Okay. Put our lid right there. And now... What I'm going to try to do is carefully open this up without spilling the juice. And there's a lot of juice in this bag. Now, whoa, look at that piece of ham stuck to the... Now, what I'm going to try to do, so this doesn't fall down, is on this rack, since we have it in the one-inch position on the new wave oven, you see the, the four legs that come up for when you invert it? I'm just going to try to drape the bag over those so it doesn't accidentally fall down. Now I'm gonna open this up. I have a fork here, I'll just use this to open this up. You know what I could, well this might be a little risky. Let me take the extender ring off to let me work on this. There we go. See what I'm doing now? You can get a better idea of what I'm trying to do. So by putting the bag over here, it's holding it up so the juice doesn't run out and also gives me the room to work on it. So now I think what I'm going to do is I have our, our glaze that we made before that we put on originally. I'm just going to put a quick coating on here. As you can see, this is already, uh, this is already done, really. But we're just going to get this to... Uh, caramelize those pineapples and cherries and get this last little bit of glaze on here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on now. Put our fruit and then put another coating of the glaze. Okay, so now this is simple. You, you probably have done this before. I've seen others do it. We just take the toothpick, put it through a cherry, and put a piece of pineapple. And just like that. And just cover the whole surface best you can with as many as you want now when we go to serve this and you know, we'll have to take some off because I do have the face side down which is fine nothing wrong with that Put some more on here. Put a 
this pump one. Okay. Put two more on this side and we'll be done. Okay. Actually, you know what? I could probably get... Well, we'll just put one more on this side, I think. Don't want to overdo it and go crazy. Although I could put one right here. Let's put one right there. You know, it's a shame to leave that one little piece of pineapple, so I think we'll add just one more. We'll add that to this side. Come on. There we go. No, this, this thing get a look at that. See, I put the pineapples and cherries all around it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to gently uh, drizzle a little more glaze, especially on the fruit. Because this will caramelize and make that fruit luscious. It'll, it'll just be delicious. Trying to be careful not to knock the fruit off. And like I said, we're going to do this for about another half hour. Keep an eye on it in case they just start to get overdone. But half hour should be about right. I'll just put a little more on the ham here. I'll tell you what, I'm getting hungry. This doesn't get you hungry. There's something wrong with you. I don't know. All right. So we have it all set. Now, we'll put the ring back on carefully. We'll put the top unit back on. And I'm going to set this for 30 minutes. And that should caramelize everything, and then we'll uh, pull it out of there so, and uh, present it and, and taste it. See you in about 30 minutes. Okay, everybody, we're back. It's been about another 30 minutes, and let's take a look. Look at that. <laughs> okay, now what I'll do is I'm going to put on. I'm going to put it on this side, so I'm going to have to take these two out. Whoops. Take these out. And I'm going to need my wolf claws. All right. Hopefully this will lift right out. There we go. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is lay it on the side. <laughs> All the pineapples are falling off. <laughs> Don't want them to fall off, not yet. Not until I show it to you. Let me stick these back on real quick. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to rotate it so you can see what it looks like here. Too many things in the way here. Let's see. Look at that, huh? Does that look delicious or what? Get really close. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to do a couple of things. Uh, I'll leave that cool for a couple of minutes. We have all of this juice in here. And I'm going to try to get it. I don't know if this is going to be large enough, the container I have. Let me get this pineapple out of here. It fell. We'll just lay it on there. How's that? As you see, the cleanup on this is going to be very easy. Just wipe the, the insides of the rings, and we, we're pretty much good to go. Whoa, this is hot. This is hot. Be careful. <laughs> You should probably let this cool before handling it, but I'm trying to hurry get this done to show you. I'm just trying to manipulate it so I can get it to pour in here. It's probably not a good idea. How about if I 
<laughs> Make some room first. Okay. Let me let this cool for a minute. Now I'm going to pour the glaze on here. I'm going to pour some more glaze on here or drizzle it. Okay. Now, I'll turn that around. Let's give this another go. Oh, not too bad. It's very hot. All right, I only spilled a little, not too bad. So what I'm gonna do, let me clean this up. I'll get my plate over here and we'll give it a taste test. All right, let's give this a taste. Look at that. Whoa. Cut around the bone. Trying not to make a mess. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Oh. Let me get another. Trying to shave it real thin here. Oh, 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 yeah. There we go. Put a little pineapple here. Okay. Now what I also have here, here is the uh, the broth that I saved from the new wave oven, the extra juice. And here is that, uh, whatever is left over from the basting in that pot, that glaze. So I'm going to put a little bit of that glaze on here. Oh yeah. Ah, what the heck? I'll put on everything. All right, now. Oh, <laughs> let's give this a taste. Oh. Hmm. 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 This glaze is a knockout, and this ham is delicious. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. So, I highly recommend you try using, making your baked ham in that oven bag, in a Reynolds bag or some other brand of bag. Use that and the New Wave oven made it nice and convenient. I didn't tie up my large oven. I was able to use that New Wave. Uh, very little cleanup. And if you use my little uh, trick of the special spices and, and, and the ingredients, You'll get this unique flavor that your guests will say, wow, I, I've had honey baked ham before, but it never tasted quite like this. You know, what, what's your secret? And then naturally you don't tell them. Or you just say, Chef Bob uh, gave you the secret. So anyway, please try this for your next holiday ham. I think you'll really like it. It's, it's very good. It's a little sweet and savory. It's just the perfect blend. So give this a try. And if you like this video and like to see more, uh, Chef Bob Creations, please uh, press the like, thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment or two. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to eat some more ham. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. The smell, too, the smell is just, it smells wonderful, and the taste, mmm. Mmm. Very tender. Mmm. Mmm.
Mm-hmm. Look at that. Mm-hmm. I think it has your name on it. <laughs>